Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven. And in this video, I would like to answer a question if you can use SharePoint as a public website. So here's a use case for you. Uh, too often when I work you know, with clients, I get a request um, you know, to share, let's say, an intranet, the entire internet, or maybe um, you know, one particular site um, externally with external parties. And, you know, let me show you, for example, what happens if I try, you know, to share, make this URL available to external parties. So I'm going to uh, copy this URL. So when an external party follows this URL, they will get a screen similar to this one where it is prompting them to log in. Now, obviously, because external parties uh, do not have, you know, your company's credentials, what are the options? Uh, well, look, um, so first of all, you can, um, you know, share the site and invite, you, you know, external users. So, for example, if I type in, you know, greg at gmail.com, uh, what will happen is the, you know, I will receive uh, uh, an email at my Gmail address with the invitation to join uh, essentially that particular site. However, uh, I will, it's still not going to be available to me just, you know, by following the URL. I will be prompted to enter my Gmail address and then Microsoft will send me a temporary passcode. And uh, only at that point, I will be able to uh, access the site. Um, now, uh, let me tell you a bit of, I guess, history, uh, what, you know, has occurred with uh, this particular feature and why we have this question in the first place. Uh, in the early days of SharePoint on Online, uh, from around 2013 up until 2015, we actually used to have an ability uh, to create a site. Uh, we used to call it uh, site collection at that point of time, you know, essentially a single site uh, collection uh, that we could share, you know, publicly um, uh, without uh, essentially users uh, entering any credentials. Uh, I actually pulled this as the article from Microsoft on this topic, but you know, this is the actually the announcement that they uh, are discontinuing this feature. We only had it for uh, a few years, uh, and I believe they discontinued it around uh, 2015 or so. Uh, but I just want to show you, this is the uh, kind of the URL uh, address, uh, the naming convention that used to be the, you know, whatever the domain is of the organization, dash public.sharepoint.com. So uh, essentially it was a special, you know, address for that particular site and it could be used, um, as an, you know, to, to maybe build out your company, you know, a blog, a company, you know, website that you could just share externally with anyone you wished. So um, as I already mentioned and as documented in this article, uh, essentially it has been totally discontinued. We no longer have uh, this uh, capability. Uh, let me, um, you know, let me uh, tell you kind of a few, I don't want to call them, uh, I guess, uh, walkarounds because they're not really walkarounds, but uh, a few options, I guess, uh, that exist uh, in terms of inviting external, uh, you know, parties to your content. So option number one, uh, as I mentioned, uh, would be just to uh, invite, you know, essentially somebody, um, you know, somebody, um, uh, you know, from outside by just, you know, inviting them uh, and, and type in their uh, email address. So for example, I will, uh, uh, I will do something like this. This is just a, a Gmail address, uh, a test Gmail address that belongs to me, just like that. And essentially, it's going to give you a warning and, um, you, you know, that this is an external user. And obviously, for example, I want to give them, you know, some sort of, you know, different access. And I would click, you know, share. Now, um, as I mentioned already, uh, the recipient will get an email, but, you know, they will not have, um, you know, uh, access to the site just by clicking on it. Uh, they will need to enter the email every single time, and every single time Microsoft will send them a temporary, uh, a temporary, um, you know, code that they have to punch in. And this is done for security reasons, obviously. 
Um, so your best option, if you need to share the entire site, would be literally just to you know invite the user. But once again, they will need to uh, enter their email every single time and uh, uh, you know essentially type in that uh, code that they're going to receive at that point of time. The other option is the ability uh, to share files and folders anonymously. So while we do not have the capability to share the entire site uh, with anyone you want, right, publicly, we do have the ability, we do have the ability to share individual files and folders um, in that manner. So uh, this is something you would typically, you know, kind of control in, you know, this is controlled by IT and by IT, uh, you know, uh, by default, it's not enabled. But um, for example, on this site, uh, essentially what you need to do, if you click share, and obviously this is a task for your IT department. So by default, uh, it doesn't kind of allow anonymous sharing on a site, but you can say, you know, specify anyone. Uh, but look what it says here in fine print. Users can share files and folders using links that don't require sign-in. So it does allow anonymous sharing, but only for files and folders. So even though I enabled um, anonymous sharing on this particular site, you know, still, right, let me prove it to you. I'm going to uh, copy the URL and I'm going to just, you know, go in here and type it in. Again, I'm getting the prompt, I'm getting the prompt, uh, right? So we do have to sign in because I, I tried sharing the entire site. But let me show you, because I enabled this anonymous sharing, I can share files and folders uh, anonymously. Uh, so let me show you how to do that. Uh, right click, copy link. And now by default, it gives you people in your organization link. So if I now paste that link or, you know, send it to some external, you know, consultant or user, uh, it's not going to work because once again, it's going to prompt them to uh, log in. So what you want to do is click on settings and choose anyone. All right, choose anyone. And it literally says share with anyone, doesn't require sign in. Now, because you will never know who that individual is, uh, there are some additional settings you can set up here, right, uh, to make it a little bit more secure. For example, I want this recipient, you know, just to view, because if you leave it by default as can edit, that means they can, you know, pretty much edit the documents, delete them. You don't want that, right? So, and you can also set an expiration date uh, so that the link will expire, right? So it's not, uh, you know, uh, you know, infinite, I guess. And then you can also set the password. Maybe you have a, a password, uh, uh, you know, in case if, you know, this uh, uh, link, link becomes loose and somebody gets a hold of it, at least they will need be, will be prompted to enter the password. But for now, I just, you know, I'm happy with what I have. And again, it's recreating the link. Look at this, anyone with a link can view. So now if I go to uh, essentially this, um, you know, another browser. So let's pretend the user just types in. Uh, this link follows the link. Look at this. Um, now, again, they don't have access to the entire site. And read-only gave me, you know, the read-only access. And remember how I had other stuff on, uh, uh, you know, other folders in the library? The recipient doesn't see any of that. Essentially, just this folder. And again, not much I can do here, right? Because uh, I gave the user uh, edit, uh, I'm sorry, view privileges. And even if the user tries to go, you know, to, to, to a home page, right? You know, essentially there will be access, uh, you know, denied uh, error message. Um, so that's as far as you can go in terms of anonymous uh, sharing. Uh, now, as to why, you know, I guess uh, the public sharing has been, uh, you know, disabled, right, by Microsoft, you know, almost 10 years ago. Um, I think primarily, to be honest, this is just my opinion, but I think it has to do with security first and foremost. Uh, in all honesty, right, I mean, you know, all the sites, you know, uh, typically you collaborate within the organization and all the sites, uh, you know, are meant primarily, primarily for internal, you know, uh, consumption. Uh, while obviously external sharing is encouraged, um, you really want to, 
you know, to make sure you know who is updating, right? Uh, you're, you're probably dealing with, you know, your projects, your internal projects, a lot of stuff, confidential content. So um, it always, you know, helps to kind of know who is working on the document. So that's why I think uh, they deactivated, uh, deactivated, uh, uh, you know, essentially the ability to share anonymously. In my opinion, you know, there are much better platforms if you're trying to build a blog or trying to build a public face and, you know, website with all the cool visual effects. I mean, uh, you have WordPress, you have many other content management systems for that, but, you know, SharePoint is great at what it uh, does the best. And that is, you know, uh, a, a kind of internal uh, and external collaboration. Uh, document management capabilities, you know, lists, pages, and so on. So that's all I wanted to share in this particular video. Hopefully you learned something new. As always, uh, happy to see you on my uh, channel and uh, see you soon. Goodbye.